In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. So it's been a long time that you have had Mass here in uh, Streaky Bay, Australia, way down in the southern part in South Australia. So it's a joy to bring you the Holy Mass today, May the 16th, Feast of St. Ubaldus, 2019, here in wonderful Australia. And um, Archbishop Lefebvre was able, I think, to visit Australia, wasn't he? Twice he came with Father Cummings, thanks to Father Cummings, the good old priest who, uh, like many good priests after the Vatican Council too, were expelled from their diocese, from their congregations, and put to the streets. But that didn't discourage Father Cummings. He, he kept taking care of the souls and driving all throughout Australia for many miles in an old car, I'm told, to uh, take care of the faithful. And we're, in, we're still in this emergency operation survival. We're still in it, and it's worse than ever because Rome has wandered farther and farther away from her commission given by Christ, who founded the Catholic Church. And the commission given to the Pope is hand down what has been given by the Blessed Trinity to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ commanded the apostles, go preach to all nations, don't change any doctrine. St. Saint, Saint Paul says if, any, if, if, if even an angel of heaven comes and tells you a different doctrine, a different catechism, a different set of sacraments, a different Ten Commandments, a different Bible, a different Mass, a different belief other than what Christ gave to you, don't listen to him. And that's been our, the Catholic reaction since Vatican II. We've had to, all Catholics, are bound to oppose the destruction of our faith and the Holy Catholic Mass. And the sad thing is, like most revolutions, most people, because it's easier, most slide with the new religion. Because all the authorities both secular and church authorities um, side with the new revolution. So I want to just kind of cover during my visits here in Australia in these next, what is it, a week and a half going throughout Australia, I want to just bring out many of the good quotes and the clear teaching of our great founder of the Society of St. Pius X, of which I am a member. I refuse to go with the conciliar SSPX, but I, by God's mercy and grace, stay with the traditional Society of St. Pius X. <laughs> Just like Catholics have had to uh, refuse to go with the conciliar church in, uh, right after the council and stay with the Catholic Church of all time. So it is, we're all bound to profess the Catholic faith, take the anti-modernist oath, and that means to oppose what attacks the Catholic faith and the Catholic Mass. So, um, as you know, in 2012, there was prepared the gradual overthrow of the Society of St. Pius X, founded by Archbishop Lefebvre, which when Bishop Fillet in 2012 set a completely new direction. And that new direction was set by signing a general chapter statement that attached to it six conditions for an agreement with modernist Rome. Six conditions to come under Rome. And the conditions are not first doctrinal. They are not first the conditions laid down by Archbishop Lefebvre. The conditions laid down by Archbishop Lefebvre were Rome must come back to the Catholic faith. Rome must profess the anti-modernist oath, the syllabus of errors of Pius IX, Pius X's 
lamentabile, all the condemnations of the modernist errors and heresies, and pascendi, and the social kingship of Jesus Christ, and mortalium animos of Pius XI, and all these teachings of condemnations of liberalism, modernism, and ecumenism by all the popes. And until Rome professes this, we cannot talk about any agreement. And this is clear. It always has been clear. But sadly, Bishop Fillet took, took this turn in 2012. Hence, the need for Catholics to oppose this. Hence, there arose what was throughout the world called, called just because there was really no other name, the, called the Catholic Resistance, or some have called it the Society's St. Pius X, Marian Corps. But even in this, we've had to uh, also part ways, sad to say, with those who still wanted to embrace the new Mass and have one hand around tradition, like, pardon the example, but it's, it does fit. Um, a man cannot have two wives, he can only have one. But uh, a married man, the situation of those compromises is like having one arm around a traditional wife and one arm around the conciliar wife. You can't have two wives. We have to be faithful to the one wife. As, and Christ laid this down. So those who want to compromise still in within the so-called resistance who want to bend over and make make way for the new mass that that the the mass can actually pour out grace that it's actually a catholic rite that it's actually uh, produced true miracles and the so-called Navasoto miracles have been proven to be frauds have been proven to be frauds and and they continue, these so-called New Mass miracles continue to deceive souls into thinking that the New Mass is, is just fine to go to, when it's actually very destructive to the faith. So we have to stay with Catholic tradition, stay with the line of Archbishop Lefebvre, and not budge, and not budge, until Rome comes back to tradition. What was true last century is true this century. What was true f since Christ established and true for all eternity is true for all the future. Truth does not change. As it says in Malachi, God says, or rather Micaiah, he says, I am God and I do not change. Ego dominus et non mutor, I do not change. So truth doesn't change. Does that, does that mean it's stagnant and gets moldy and rusty? Never. Truth is always beautiful, always new, always young, always brilliant, always majestic as God is. So truth doesn't change. But change is always new. And change is the, actually the, um, the roots of all heresies. So let's uh, review some of these great um, sayings of Archbishop Lefebvre, just to keep a clear mind in this terrible chaos. And remember that Father Beriel, who was a priest with Archbishop Lefebvre in a cone, and he died there in a cone, this uh, good old priest, Father Ludovic Beriel, he said that um, it's it's very common that 40 years after the founding of a new religious order or a new religious congregation, 40 years after, the followers start to stray from the founder. So even this happened in the life of St. Uh, Alphonsus Liguri. During his lifetime, they were starting to stray. And they even expelled him from the order. <laughs> so from the order he founded. So, the Arch Society of St. Pius X was founded in 1970, and by 2012, definitely within 42 years after, the Society of St. Pius X was already beginning to drift. 
And this is very sad, but it's not so surprising because these days are, are in such an upheaval. So listen to uh, Archbishop Lefebvre. In 1974, he made very clear the stand. 1974, this is out of his great de doc, his declaration of November the 21st. We hold firmly with all our heart and with all our mind to Catholic Rome, guardian of the Catholic faith and of the traditions necessary to maintain the maintenance of this faith to the eternal Rome. We refuse, on the other hand, and have always refused, to follow the Rome of neo-modernist and neo-Protestant tendencies, which became clearly manifest during the Second Vatican Council and after the Council in all the reforms which issued from it. So here, Archbishop Lefebvre, with a great doctrinal declaration, which is worth rereading throughout the year often, Archbishop Lefebvre plants his flag near the cross the, with eternal Rome and refusing the modernist Rome. In 1976, this was the hot summer, he had the great sermon in Lille in July, but here in his ordination sermon, this is June 29th, 1976, Archbishop Lefebvre says these words, We are not of this new religion. We do not accept this new religion. We are of the religion of all time. We are of the Catholic religion. We are not of this universal religion, as they call it today. This is not the Catholic religion anymore. We are not of this liberal, modernist religion, which has its own worship, its own priests, its own faith, its own catechisms, its own ecumenical Bible. We cannot accept these things. They are contrary to our faith. It is an immense, immense pain for us to think that we are in difficulty with Rome because of our faith. We are in a truly dramatic situation. We have to choose an appearance of disobedience, for the Holy Father cannot ask us to abandon our faith. It is impossible, impossible. We choose not to abandon our faith, for in that we cannot go wrong. That was 1976, and then July, Archbishop Lefebvre gave the great sermon in Lille, which all of you also should be familiar with. You can find it on the Catechol, no, on the SSPX dot, SSPX Marian Core. On that website, you'll find the Sermon of Lille in 1976 of Archbishop Lefebvre's own voice preaching in French, but you can uh, get the English subtitles. You got to press some button, but it's there. And I recommend that and recommend it to your children and your grandchildren also. They got to be reminded, and it's and most slide with error because they forget history and tradition. They forget what was taught before, and this has always been. There's nothing new under the sun, and whenever a revolution hits and turns people away from the truth. Those who stay with the truth have to be rooted in history and tradition. And with that, we stay with the truth, because uh, our, the, the, the Catholic truth doesn't change. Here in Archbishop Lefebvre in 1976, Pope Paul VI, a very liberal modernist pope, and he is certainly no saint. He has the label now from the conciliar church, but... No man uh, who has done such damage to the faith and the mass. There's no way the Catholic Church would ever canonize such a criminal. So in 1976, there was issued the suspension by Paul VI against Archbishop Lefebvre. And Archbishop Lefebvre considered it completely null and void. And here's, here's what Archbishop Lefebvre said about this suspension. This suspension deprives me of the inherent right of celebrating Holy Mass 
and of conferring the sacraments and of preaching in consecrated places. Namely, I am forbidden to celebrate the new Mass, to confer the new sacraments, to preach the new doctrine. So, in a way, he's being a little humorous because he's saying, it's a, this is a blessing that I am barred from saying this horrible new Mass and new sacraments. So he, 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 he wrote, Archbishop Lefebvre, when Monsignor Benelli, in a letter of June 25th, 1976, he wrote a letter to Archbishop Lefebvre demanding fidelity to the conciliar church. And he doesn't say the Catholic Church. Here's his letter. This is uh, Monsignor Benelli. He says in his letter, If they have good will and are seriously prepared for a priestly ministry in true fidelity to the conciliar church, notice conciliar church, he doesn't say the Catholic Church, then the finding of the best solution for them will be undertaken. But let them, that's the SSPX, let them also make a beginning through this act of obedience to the church. So Archbishop Lefebvre says to this in response to, Car to Monsignor Benelli, he says these, these words, July 29th, 1976, reflections of Archbishop Lefebvre on the suspension of Divinis. Here's what he says. What could be more clear? We must, according to Rome, henceforth obey and be faithful to the conciliar church, no longer to the Catholic church. Right there is the whole problem. We are suspended, our divinis, by the conciliar church, the conciliar church to which we have no wish to belong. That conciliar church is a systematic church, because it breaks with the Catholic Church that has always been. It has its new dogmas, its new priesthood, its new institutions, its new worship. The Church that affirms such errors is at once schismatic and heretical. This conciliar Church is therefore not Catholic. And really, this is 1976, this really just set the tone. Of, it's clear until Rome comes back to Catholic tradition and condemns Vatican II in the New Mass, there's just no way there can be any agreement, no working together, no giving obedience to those destroying the Catholic Church and the Catholic faith. Have things changed since 76? No, they're worse. They're more worse and more clear. The lines are more clear where we must stand. And this is why it's so tragic that many good priests of the society were saying, well, you got to trust Bishop Fillet. Many priests told me this. you got to trust Bishop Fillet and now Father Pagliariani. They have the grace of state. But we know that every mother has a grace of state for her to raise her children and to be faithful in her marriage. Every father has the grace of state to govern wisely his family and to lead them spiritually first and also materially. Uh, every priest has a grace of state. Every bishop. And all this talk about the grace of state of Bishop Fillet, they, they forgot that Bishop Archbishop Lefebvre had a special grace of state to be a founder of the congregation of priests that will restore Catholic tradition, or were meant to be. And Archbishop Lefebvre not only did, did this and, and followed that grace of state, but he was even foretold, I, I have no doubt, the Virgin Mary in Quito in 1611, when she spoke to Mother Mariana in Quito, Ecuador, she foretold a prelate of the Catholic Church who would preserve the faith and the Catholic priesthood at the end of the 20th century. So she gives a specific time she gives a specific rank that it's not just a priest nor a pope, it's a prelate that is a bishop. And it's very clear, show me, show me. We, we know that the end of the 20th century has already come and passed. Who, other than Archbishop Lefebvre, has fulfilled that role to preserve the Catholic priesthood and the real faith? 
And then in 2012, his own sons have abandoned him. And they want this agreement with modernist Rome. And now they've got the favors of modernist Rome. Confessions are now given jurisdiction, marriages, and holy orders. They're already swallowed. And they're already having to submit and meet with the local bishops, certainly on questions of the marriages. So they're already swallowed. They're already gone. But we've got to keep praying, obviously. Keep praying for them. In 1976, Archbishop Lefebvre said in his Christmas letter, Our attitude in the face of the upheaval brought about by Vatican II, either we conform to the official directives of those holding positions of authority within the church, or we integrally preserve the church's treasure. In other words, either we obey the modernist Rome and turn our back on Catholic tradition, or we keep Catholic tradition and have to disobey the modernist Rome, but in doing this, we will preserve the Catholic Church's treasures of the faith and the mass of all time. So I'll stop here at 76. I'll pick up tomorrow with 1977. But uh, it's very important to be reminded of these words because the fight is exactly the same. It hasn't changed. So... Now we're being punished by the very sons of Archbishop Lefebvre who should be holding his line. Now the priests of the Catholic resistance who want to hold the line of Archbishop Lefebvre hold his position until Rome comes back. Now they're kicked out and now they're being punished. So the tables have turned, but the truth doesn't turn. The truth doesn't change. And this is where we have to fall on our knees before the Blessed Virgin Mary and before our Lord here present in the Blessed Sacrament and soon to be reenacting his sacrifice of Calvary on the altar here. Let's fall down on our knees, begging God the grace to persevere, to humbly persist and resist this destruction of the Catholic Church and of Catholic tradition. By holding the clear line laid down by the church and all her teachings and all her councils and all her traditional catechisms and all her saints and all her constant um, teaching and the rites and ceremonies of the seven sacraments and everything handed down, which was handed down to us on a golden platter by Archbishop Lefebvre. And these good priests like Father Cummings and many in America and in the United States, we had over a hundred of these faithful priests kicked out of their parishes. And now they're all mostly dead. They've all died fighting and they've gone to their award. So let's imitate them and pray for the grace of this fidelity in these most crazy times, upside down times, revolutionary times, times given to Satan. As Our Lady of La Salette said, hell would be opened and the devils let loose over the whole earth for the span of almost a hundred years. And hopefully we're coming to the end of these hundred years. And that means we are soon to see the victory of the Virgin Mary. That is coming soon. So let's prepare for this and beg our heaven for this grace by the daily rosary, the wearing of the scapular, a great love and devotion to the Mother of God. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to them. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to them. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.